Well, hello, fellow puzzlers. <laughs> Haven't said that in a while. I don't even think I'm saying it right. But nonetheless, <laughs> here we are. Um, so I'm going to do uh, a new puzzle today. Um, yeah, the other puzzle uh, unfortunately took me a long time to do. And to be honest, I did not give it as much attention as I have other puzzles. Um, things are very busy for me but in a good way, so isn't that exciting for me? Um, nonetheless, I decided um, the puzzle was losing a battle on the table for space, and rather, and the puzzle got broken, a ton of pieces went onto the floor. You know what, I just decided it, it's not the time, so, you know, first thing when I decide to do that type of a puzzle, like a winter scene, I will, I will try my best to do that puzzle first. But if I don't, guess what? A puzzle, it, it doesn't care. It's, it's, it's just happy. Well, it's, it's honestly, it's an, it is an inanimate object. So it really has no feelings. Um, it's all the feelings that you put onto a puzzle and, uh, and that, that's okay. So, um, I personally pick my puzzles based on the emotion that I feel when I look at the front of the, when I look at the, the picture of the puzzle. That, that's how I choose it. I'm not sure how you guys choose your puzzles. Maybe you choose it off the company, the brand, da, 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 da. Now, if I do know that I don't like the brand, it doesn't matter how much I enjoy the picture. If I know I'm just gonna be so frustrated from every piece, I probably won't get it. I haven't really found that many brands that I'm not that impressed with. Um, so it's kind of a moot point. Nonetheless, let's get going. So uh, again, <laughs> I keep doing Cobble Hill, um, but technically this would only be the third puzzle. And if I, if I complete it, it would only be the second completed Cobble Hill. I am going to branch out into other puzzles. Um, but again, this scene I'm not sure if you guys, yeah, you, sh you should be able to see that. Um, this scene with, you know, springtime, uh, little chicks everywhere, flowers, this, uh, you know, cracked corn, like, uh, you know, for their food, uh, little, little sewing thread. Um, this all speaks to me immensely. So this is the puzzle I'm going to do. So uh, freshly, uh, freshly purchased. Uh, actually purchased a while ago to be quite honest Th this year but a while ago so let's open her up and I have some pretty big news uh, it's not so big news for my life because it's it was my life for 10 years I'm making so much noise <laughs> um, yeah just some news that uh, some of you may not be aware of out there in uh, internet audience land um, <clears throat> I have gone back and forth in my head about how to talk about, hang on, okay. I have gone back and forth in my head of how to talk about, um, what I want to talk about. I have sought advice, I have, um, pro from professional bodies, um, and whatnot. So, um, <sighs> Oh gosh, I, uh, I'm nervous and I don't know why. Um, I think, I think I'm just so scared to upset anyone. Um, it is a very exhausting way to live. Um, imagine that you were just for a moment, imagine that you were afraid to speak, to breathe, to think, to move, to anything. Um, and it's not one particular person in my life that makes me feel like that. Um, I do believe I didn't o I wasn't always like this, um, but I do believe that um, it is a very strong part of PTSD because I feel as though if I say the wrong thing, then all of the horrible moments from my past are going to come back. Not those moments, but though in those moments in the past i felt you know lost scared angry insecure like all the negative stuff and and so now although i feel really a lot better um i feel like if i make a mistake that everything's just going to come crashing down and it's uh it's it's a very hard way to live so hang on it makes some more noise i must say the one thing i do wish is that uh is um we could figure out a way to stop doing the plastic for the puzzle pieces 
Um, I don't know what the solution is, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just because uh, because yeah. Anyway, if you get it, you get it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do my typical sorting. Um, it's gonna be easier for me to talk just facing this way because I have to sort. So um, I will work on better camera angles, but I'm trying to do it so that you guys in the audience can see the most of the puzzle board. Um, anyway, and it's a little bit chilly out here. Typically, the gr I'm in a greenhouse. I'm in my greenhouse. Typically, my greenhouse is like much warmer. Um, so I can't say I'm gonna be out here long, but. Uh, oh, look at the blue dust. I don't know if you guys can see that on the table. Ugh, ugh that drives me nuts. Anyway, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Cobble Hill is doing the absolute best they can do to not have that blue dust everywhere. I think I also think I put my microphone in the wrong uh, spot on the table, but nonetheless. Um, so right now it's just about flipping and organizing. Um, so my news. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say my news is I got rid of the ums, but I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Let me. And this is a new table to me and a new chair, so I'm trying to get everything set up the way I want it. Okay. I really want to move this mic a little bit. Mm, okay, I just have to leave it and just accept it is what it is. So, my news. Um... So I have uh, officially um, ended a career in healthcare. Um, <clears throat> I can no longer go back to a job that I thought that I would do for the rest of my life. Um, I thought I would retire from this job, which is why I put uh, blood, sweat, and tears into the job, um, into the education. Um, I was quite older going back into the career. Um, so for the last 10 years, I was, I am no longer, I was, past tense, a paramedic. Um, I was a primary care paramedic, which would be the equivalent, I guess, if you don't know levels of paramedicine, um, I was the equivalent of, let's say, an LPN. I know nothing about nursing, so please no one attack me for saying that. I'm just saying in paramedic world, there's different levels of care providers. Um, I, I started and ended at the very first step, which is primary care. Now, I am so nervous whew, to talk about this. Um, as a paramedic, we... I, okay, let me just use the phrase I because I can't speak of anyone else's experience. I have, to, I have to be so careful what I talk about. And please, everyone be rest assured, if, if for some reason you met me while I was working, um, I am never, ever going to talk about what happened th at that time in, in your life. Um, I value confidentiality more than anyone could ever know. Um, and not that I did anything wrong, period. New sentence. Confidentiality is so important. To be honest, I struggle with the shows like 911, What's Your Emergency? And then they play the the 911 tapes like for people to to watch and listen to like there's shows i i can't watch those shows um i find it very difficult to listen to someone when they are having what they deem as an emergency because um i am not judging anyone but there are many different types of emergencies, as I'm certain in your specific life, even though I don't know you, you may have uh, felt, you know, at, at many different times that this was overwhelming and this was overwhelming. And, and if you were unable to deal with that um, particular thing that bothered you, uh, in that moment, then it does become an emergency. It just, you know, do you need medical aid? Do you need 
um, you know, police aid? Do you need fire? Like who, who do you need? Or, you know, something else? Do you need a plumber? Do you need, you know, there, there's many types of emergencies. So, um, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to lose my train of thought a lot. Um, I'm very scared to talk about this. Um, but one thing that I think should be talked about is some of the hardship that comes with being a paramedic. Um, and that is not to dissuade, I don't, I think that's the right word. That is not to put off anyone from entering that career. It is a great career. The things that I miss immensely about that career, immensely, is helping people. Um, I'm going to try my best not to cry. Um, it, it's not about being a hero, um, but I will talk about that. I always hated being called a hero. Um, that is my personal opinion. So as I speak, I will do my best to always make sure I say past tense because I am no longer a paramedic. I, I'm not going back to that career. I am done being a paramedic. And when I speak, I speak only of my own experience and my own thoughts and opinions. Um, I don't speak on anyone's behalf. This is just me talking. Um, but it, it, that was a job that occupied my life for, I worked 10 years, plus the schooling. Um, and, and when you're into a career like that, it is all encompassing because, you know, um, as you can see in the movies, um, so this is not a breach of confidentiality because in the movies, uh, you, anyone can see that sometimes paramedics have to, uh, pick up people, um, and, and so you actually have to be mindful of your own condition of your body, I guess, like our, our, it's not that you have to be super person and super strong, but you know, if, if, if you don't, if you're not mindful of your own body and you do something, uh, you do a bad lift because it's based off of adrenaline, for example, as anyone would like, you know, you hear those, those mythical uh, legends of a mother picking a car up off a baby. Like, I, I, I'm not asking for proof. I, I'm just saying, I'm sure that has happened because adrenaline can really power you. It's, it's actually quite interesting to me. I've felt it many times in my life, um, not, not just at work. However, uh, being called a hero, that's a hard one because it almost becomes like you have these standards that you have to fit into. And to be honest, that's a lot of pressure. Um, I don't, I don't mean to criticize someone who may have had experience with someone else and they, that, that the, the, the patient or the victim or the, you know, the person who received the help, if, if, if that is the word they use to express their gratuity to someone for saving their life or, you know, what have you, that is fine. But, um, the day to day, like, you know, become a hero, be, 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 de, de, you know, just all that stuff. It's just, I find that very hard because um, I will never talk about my patients, um, ever. Um, but, <clears throat> sorry, this is so hard. Um, I will always remember the ones that I couldn't save. Um, and, uh, that's hard. That's, ask any healthcare provider. Um, so sometimes when people will say to me back in the day when I, when I was working, cause I am no longer a paramedic. I am formally licensed. I ha I have no paramedic license anymore. Um, when I did have a license, um, you know, sometimes it was expressed to me, you know, 
you save lives, you know, I was like, no, no, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I guess, I guess in a way, like you just, you, f I, I always felt like, well, I, I, I don't save lives. I, I, you know, paramedics, like where, where do paramedics primarily work? This isn't confidential. We see the ambulances going around, right? So we all know paramedics work out of an ambulance. In fact, many times paramedics are called ambulance drivers. It, it's just, it's, it's just very hard because you, it, there, there's a lot of pressure. So what is a paramedic expected to do in their job? Well, they're expected to, obviously, they must respond to emergencies um, because they're called, they're part of the first responder family, right? And they, uh, paramedics, uh, if you look up a job description, um, it should say in there somewhere, you know, provide, um, provide emergency medical aid, I guess, would be the, the most basic version. Um, however, I don't really know if I can get into specific, well, and, and I don't want to, like, I, I don't want to talk about, well, well, I, you know, if, 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 if you have a headache, then we give this medication. Like, I just, I don't see the point of that. Like, it, that, that, that is just me talking just to talk. Um, what I want to focus on more is just how hard it is to be a paramedic, um, because I think the biggest thing is, is okay let me stop sorting for a second so you work a job that typically most people will say to you you know at a cocktail party or whatever what do you do for work i'm a paramedic typically the two responses you will hear back are oh wow i could never do that job or what's the craziest thing you've ever seen so it's 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 very hard because you almost feel like you're a court jester, just, just, jester, 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 um, and, and it's just, it's, it's really hard. Now, I understand that many jobs people want to know, like, oh, if you're a lawyer, what's this, and if you're a firefighter, and, you know, this, and if you're a teacher, and, like, I get it, I, I absolutely understand the, the fascination with it, because yes, it, it's a job that does have its moments of high intense adrenaline and all that good stuff. Um, but here's the problem. When you're told over and over, so 10 years I worked, okay? I don't know how many calls I did, it doesn't matter. I was active for 10 years. So, um, minus I had, I had a few, um, a few surgeries and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, but it, but I would say in total, I would, I would personally say I worked 10 years. Um, now that being said, um, a part of my PTSD that I really struggled with, um, for a long, long, long time, let me move down. I don't know if this is going to work. I feel like I have to move this. Yep, yeah, I'm going to have to, excuse me one second. <laughs> but can I tell you something I've always wanted to say that I haven't really known how to say? If, if you have a problem, and, and I don't know in what capacity, I know that's going to be taken, you know, in the wrong way. But I, all I'm saying is, is if you have... If you have a problem, typically you want uh, you want someone like a you want someone like a paramedic um, to help you because um, I can guarantee you um, I'm not comparing to anyone. So I'm just saying I do believe paramedics are very good problem solvers because you have to be you you don't have a choice. Um, you know, in in paramedic world. you are faced with, sorry, I have to think about how to say these things. Obviously, as a paramedic, you are presented with problems of varying different, you know, degrees. And even though 
you so we've already established that we that we have seen ambulances drive around well in that ambulance is a paramedic i'm not talking about numbers i'm just saying that uh, the paramedic office is an ambulance okay it's it's not an er oop, it's not an er room it's not a you know this that it, like typically ground you know paramedics work on the ground in a truck so you can bet that as i just said um, a paramedic's office is a moving vehicle. However, sometimes, as you see in the movie, so again, no surprises here, sometimes paramedics have to work in the spot that they find the person, like the, the patient, right? Um, a, 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 a person who receives any type of health care, whatever it is, is typically called a patient. So you then have to do similar type of medical interventions as a nurse or a doctor. I'm not talking in complexity. I'm just talking about like, for example, I'm working with a puzzle. I don't know, for some odd reason, if I got a paper cut, um, I become a patient uh, because let's say hypothetically, you know, it was a really bad paper cut and I couldn't fix it myself. And so I'm overwhelmed. So then I feel like it's an emergency. So I contact someone. So let's hypothetically say that, you know, uh, let's just say for some reason it's a really bad paper cut. So sometimes the paramedic, because you, you, I don't really know of a doctor that does house calls anymore. I think that got replaced by paramedics. I, I don't know the history on that, nonetheless. Um, but paramedics would be expected to uh, fix the, the paper cut. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm in my greenhouse. I, I'm not in a uh, OR room. I'm not in a hospital. I'm not, you know. So the thing that is just really hard is there's a lot of pressure. Because as we know from all of the wonderful literature that typically governments or, you know, doctor's offices or, or whoever will put out, um, many medical emergencies, um, your biggest enemy is time. So um, this is a good education moment uh, for people. Um, I am not going to tell you the signs and symptoms of a stroke. Perhaps you should call your family doctor, call your pharmacist, Google it, although I get so nervous to say to Google things because ugh, the internet, right? Um, but I'm, I won't give you the advice, but in any medical, well, let's, let's, okay. Let's go back to you having a medical, you having an emergency. I bet you that your heart was racing I bet you that your mind was racing. I bet you. Now, I'm not saying you're not cool under pressure. That's not what I mean. I mean a time when you felt that overwhelmed. And I mean, if you've never felt that overwhelmed in your life, then please make a video and tell us your secrets because, wow, good for you. Nonetheless, uh, you may have at one, at one point of your life or another felt very overwhelmed. Sorry, it's hard to sort, think of this, and like not say the, the wrong thing, because I feel like I'm saying the wrong thing. I'm just trying to express how much pressure, because what if, so I'm in my greenhouse. Okay, now um, this is purely fictitious. What if, I don't know. Okay, what if it, there's clouds in the sky, okay? I, literally, there are clouds in the sky right now. Not that you can see, but that's okay. You just have to trust me. Now, let's say for some reason it started to thunder and lightning. Well, that is going to become a very dangerous type of environment to be in a greenhouse during an active thunder and lightning storm. I think we would all agree. Yes? I'll just pretend you said yes. Now, let's say that things got worse instead of let's say the emergency so the the finger that uh, got a paper cut is getting worse so it's just really hard because there's so much out of your control and then to add to that there's guilt 
I'm telling you, I was always racked with guilt. I don't know why. Um, I did my absolute best. Um, I just, I don't know. It just, it never, it never felt like enough. Um, oh, that's hard to say. Um, I am someone who has expressed uh, since about mid-December, whatever these videos started, I've expressed that I really enjoy taking care of people and I've expressed that, um, what? I've expressed a, a lot of different thoughts. Um, sorry guys, that just totally went out of my head. I apologize. That is, I, I'm not as forgetful as I used to be. Um, but after, uh, qu quite a number of months ago, I had big episodes of forgetfulness. Um, so, so why did I bring up that today about me used to, about me at one time being a paramedic? No longer. I'm officially done. Um, because mental health is so important. I am walking away from a career that again, I thought I would do for the rest of my life. So that is very hard. I will always in my mind and in my mind only think of everyone that I couldn't save. So then you feel like a failure and sometimes I think if you can't, if you, I think that if you always feel like a failure in your life, it, it makes it that much harder to get up out of bed and face the day because you may start to feel like you've already lost even though you just opened up your eyes and that is very hard. That's a, that's a very hard because I can tell you no one gets into healthcare if they don't like helping people. So I can hand to whoever, <laughs> I, I can tell you that <laughs> hand on puzzle. <laughs> I, I can tell you that I did not go into paramedicine for the money. Um, I'm not even going to get into that topic. Um, I, I think that anybody in the world always wants more money. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, where I wanted to go with my career was actually up in the air. Um, so just to quickly jump back, um, this is something anyone can Google and, uh, you know, perhaps if this, uh, it sounds interesting to you, you know, maybe, maybe you're the next, uh, paramedic, uh, and wouldn't that be kind of cool? Um, so there's different levels. Uh, there's three levels, uh, well, there's, there's a, another fourth level, but just for clarity's sake, let's just say there's three. So there's the level I was PCP, um, uh, primary care paramedic, um, BLS, basic life skills, um, or a green tag, whatever you want to call it. Um, to me, that's not confidential. That's just matter of fact. So if you're going to start the career, um, and if you want to go for it, I wish you all the best, like all the best. Um, and then there's a red tag or advanced care. Um, and then there's a uh, CCP, which would be critical care. And the last one is the biggest one um, uh, that I want you to pay attention to right now, just because CCPs, uh, they work out of helicopters and airplanes. And I just think that's so cool. Like, I just, gosh, I just, I do think that's so cool. I, I, I just, that's cool. Like, I don't know. But you want to know the most wildest thing about that? So that was the path I was hopefully headed down, not right away. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, but now, um, and I, I'm an avid traveler. Like I used to live in Toronto, so I used to come 
uh, fly back and forth uh, to home every few months. And um, now I unfortunately have a terrible fear of flying. Um, I have really bad claustrophobia. I never used to have that ever, 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 ever. Oh my goodness, you, I don't know if you could be a paramedic and have claustrophobia. I'm just joking. Um, but uh, oh my goodness, my claustrophobia is so bad now and I'm working very hard to get over it because it's not something obviously I enjoy. I feel when I get into situations and it doesn't even have to be like a high space or a small space, if I feel that my clothing is too restricted, like we, uh, my husband and I, um, you know, we like to do different activities. And so we haven't, we're fortunate we have an ATV. So we were going to take the ATV out for a spin uh, a few months ago. And just the helmet on my, like on my head, I was like, oh my goodness, I need to step outside for a minute and get some fresh air. Um, that feeling of just feeling like you cannot breathe and you're suffocating, ooh, that is not a nice feeling and it's a feeling I want to go away immediately. Um, so I'm trying my best to work on it. I am not going to talk about my counseling because I do think that is also some, something that should be confidential. But I will say that thankfully I have a very good relationship with my counselors. So I am very fortunate. Um, that's not to say that sometimes we have to agree to disagree, but thankfully um, I am confident that my counselors have my best interest at, uh, in their heart. So there is a relationship of trust and isn't that just so nice? So I'm trying to work with them to help me get over the claustrophobia because, ugh, that is just not a life. It is well, sorry, I, I'm not trying to insult anyone that has claustrophobia. I'm just saying I went from a dramatic shift of like flying every three months at, at different points in my life to, you know, being scared of, to figurative death um, because I just, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't this, I couldn't that. So that that's really hard for me. Anyway, um, yes, where am I at here? So, uh, I may have touched on it again uh, before, but let me just quickly again. So, yes. Um, it is very hard to be called a hero. Um, I don't feel like, <clears throat> I don't feel like I ever was a hero. Um, so it's hard to accept a title. So, uh, yeah, it's maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know. Should, should we just leave the heroes, the, the name hero to like, Batman and you know figurative people because it it's just it's so much pressure because what happens when you can't save someone in any context like whether it be a firefighter police you know a, a teacher a nurse a, a plumber like I don't know but there's there's so many emergencies in the world and it's just it's it's heartbreaking to know that you can't fix them all. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm trying so hard not to cry. Um, this is, I think, as vulnerable as it gets. Um, and this is real. This isn't AI. This isn't fake. This, and I'm not doing this video to garnish any type of sympathy from anyone. If anything, I'm trying to show that there is life after a big career like that. And, and if for... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, gosh. For any paramedics out there watching this video, I don't really know how you came to find this video because I really don't talk to many paramedics anymore. Nonetheless, um, I'm lucky I got out, um, because I couldn't do the job anymore. Um, and I just want you to know that um, if you're carrying on with the job, then good for you. Um, you're a good person. You're very strong. Um, but if you ever decide that you have to leave, that decision does not make you weak. Okay? We all know 
about the phenomenon of burnout, which I'm going to discuss for our non-paramedics or people who, who don't understand burnout. So burnout is certainly how I feel many times. Um, I am someone who used to throw parties um, and I would cook from scratch everything and I would accept no help, one, because my controlling mind finds it easier to cook five different entrees instead of telling people where the, the spoon is and where that is and because like if you're in my kitchen you're, you're obviously not going to know where stuff is so trying to tell people oh this is there it's sometimes just faster for me to do it now are those control issues of mine of course they are and i'm working on them and i just lost my thought oh gosh darn that's so frustrating oh burnout yes sorry <laughs> and you, you see burnout in in real life uh in real time so burnout, I'm going to try to do this with my left, oh, my left shoulder has been so sore lately. Um, burnout is a feeling, so if you look it up, I'm sure it says something somewhat along these lines. So burnout is what I'm feeling because, um, as you all know, because if, if you guys have been tuning in, you know I have dogs. Um, I have an epileptic dog. And when she takes seizures, it's me on deck. And it, like, it's, it's, my, it's kind of my responsibility because I have the medical training. Yes, completely different species. However, uh, much like the Canadian Heritage commercial, Doctor, I Smell Burnt Toast, um, you know, their seizures do present somewhat similar if you know what you're looking for. Now. I'm not providing any medical advice. I'm simply talking about my epileptic dog. Um, so when she takes seizures, I uh, usually am not prepared, um, meaning, uh, actually she took one on one of my videos. Uh, I was doing like a, 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 I call it a heart to heart, but I was doing like a talk to the camera um, and she took a seizure as I was, uh, as I was filming and I did not have enough time to get to her so that she was safe and turn the camera off. So I just let the camera, well, I had no choice. The camera had to roll. I did post that footage because I wanted, um, people to know, have some idea of what to do, um, when it comes to your dog seizing, because that is very difficult to understand and to learn so and very scary and so you would think after 10 years of me being in healthcare, and you would think after my dog taking seizures for two to three years you would think i'm very comfortable or not lackadaisy that that is not the right word but you know it, it's the when she had her first seizure i was certainly rattled after you know her 20th or 30th seizure in her lifespan it does become somewhat easier because you are you are just used to what is about to happen now sometimes she presents differently so each and every time i treat her emergency with complete not validation with um I, I treat my, my epileptic dogs, oh, for gosh sake, I just saw a puzzle piece on the floor. I treat my epileptic dogs' seizures as serious as I would treat a human's because it's hard, she can't talk to me. So it actually makes it that much harder. Now, I'm rambling, but when she is done having her seizure, typically I have to go and separate myself from uh, from the rest of the family um, to have a good cry. And it is because, imagine, imagine how I must feel. I worked a career where I was exposed to many different emergencies without getting into specifics, but 10 years, if you looked at the statistical analytics of of that, there is a good percentage that I have dealt with seizures before. Now, I am neither confirming nor denying. I am just saying, if you look at someone's career over the course of 10 years, 
probably have done this call, that call, and the other. Regardless, let's move on. And I notice my voice is doing that statico thing I don't like. However, I'm nearly frozen, so I am doing my best to just get these pieces turned up. You can imagine it is not, it is not that far-fetched to say that because I have PTSD, certainly when my epileptic dog is seizing, yes, I know what to do because as well, I work very closely with my dog's veterinarian who is fantastic. So I've been given guidance of what to do. However, I can no longer be a paramedic and that is hard, but there is a reason I can't go back. I can say that I was a paramedic for 10 years and yes, it was hard, but I was able to do it. Now, if an ambulance drives by, I break out into a sweat. There, there's no logic in that <laughs> other than mental health. So my mind, I have, an, I have an epileptic dog who will be on medication for the rest of her life and I guess I'm always mindful that she could seize at any moment. So, do I do you imagine that I probably feel burnt out? Well, wouldn't you? And if you say no, you wouldn't be burnt out. Okay. Can you please make a video and explain how you handle such tremendous amounts of stress with so many components that are unknown. Can you just let me know how you do it? Because I am doing my absolute best. Um, but gosh, it is hard, isn't it? So, going back to the label of heroes. So, it's just, yeah, it, it's just, it's almost like the subconscious is being set up to fail because, I mean, hey, if you can work healthcare your entire life, especially after COVID, whoa, you are strong. Um, and maybe you should become a life coach because it is very hard. Oh gosh, it's hard. I think that so much has changed and some change has been amazing. Yay. Some change, Oof, not so good. And I'm not trying to gaslight anybody because everybody has their own opinions about everything. But it has to be said that it is hard to be in healthcare. Whoa. Um, it's just, I don't know. Like I don't, I, and I, I have no idea how to make it better. Um, I'm not trying to sit here and complain about it. I'm just trying to shed some light maybe on my determination to make these videos. Oh, I think the quality just went downhill big time. Oh, well, let's just keep going. Um, sorry, the screen, I can see the screen. It just looks really bad. Um, mental health to me is so important because it, it can, it, it can get lost so fast and, and, and there is proof in that. I used to fly all the time and now I'm claustrophobic if a helmet, if a ATV helmet is too tight. And I used to work on an ambulance for 10 years and now I sweat when one drives by. If, if you cannot see the correlation in that, I don't know what to tell you. I, I really don't. And, and I'm not sitting here saying you have to listen to me. No, you have a choice. But 
it's just, yeah, it's, it's wild to me. Anyway, I'm going to take a break and probably readjust some settings on my camera. Uh, it was really lovely to have you guys listen to me. And uh, yeah, next video, we I will work on putting the border together. Um, I am darn near frozen, so I think I'm going to go back inside. Um, but thank you for listening. Um, this was... I think that I needed to say that I was a paramedic, um, but I understand the complexities that come around that because as someone who responds to emergencies in places other than just, you know, a hospital, and I'm not saying that, you know, anyway, you know, going deep into someone's life sometimes carries a certain weight and I will never talk about things that, you know, are confidential. Um, that is, that is not who I am. That is, no, if, if, if you, if you have ever had me on the other side, uh, of you helping you or, you know, talking to you or, or whatever, and, and, you know, that, that is, that's between you and I, and, and that's where it will stay. So, um, but it's just, it's important to talk about how someone who studied, and, and if you pick up any paramedic textbook, it will talk about all the different parts of the body because, hey, emergencies sometimes involve different parts of the human body. It's not just, oh, if you're this, then this, and this, and this. But um, it's funny how this group of people, and I can't speak for others, so I'll speak of myself. So I had the education to understand mental health and burnout and, and stress and all of that stuff. And yet I ended up in, a, in this position so that's sad for me so i'm trying to make <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to make lemonade